welcome back to the show. You're listening to Pork Therapy Live from Pork Fest 2012. Oh, listen to that roaring crowd. I love it. Thank you so much for being here, live studio audience. I'm so excited to see so many faces out there. I'm actually really surprised that, that it drew this many people. There are lots of stuff going on at Pork Fest tonight, um, but I'm happy that you chose to be here. So thank you so much. I'm your host, Stephanie, and I'd like to introduce my next guest. It's Jake from The Voluntary Life. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Jake. It's nice to have you here. Thanks so much for having me on. <laughs> now, I, I, I'm sure this is no big secret, but you and Hannah, uh, my previous guests, are, are partners. That's right. And you came from the, the UK to yeah, be here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we've had a really nice time, actually, because we, um, we landed in Boston. That was sort of the closest place for us to fly to. Mm-hmm. And met up with some really good friends there, stayed on a houseboat. Came up here to New Hampshire. On a houseboat? Yeah. Oh, yeah, did you we get more freedom on the open seas? That was the, the plan. What we mainly got was uh, was feeling very queasy when we got off the boat. It's I a strange see. thing. If you if you sleep on a boat and you're on a boat the whole time, the, the boat itself is great. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really nice, gentle, rocking. Then what happens is you get off the boat and you walk around town and if you can't see a window if you're indoors, you suddenly find yourself rocking again because I guess your brain is trying to adjust to being on a boat the whole time. So that was a bit strange. But no, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, wow, rocking on the land. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get your land legs after you get your sea legs. Yeah, huh? apparently, yeah. Sea yeah. legs weren't a problem, it was land legs. Wow, interesting. Well, that sounds like fun, and I'm glad you got to meet up with friends. That, I mean, mm. to me, that's what Porkfest is all about. That's the thing I like the best about this week. Even though I'm running around trying to help with free aid and do the show and lots of other things, I was teaching yoga three days this week and doing a number of panels, but I'm, I'm really glad to have some time to spend with, with you and a bunch of other people that are here. And uh, so I want to talk about your show a little bit. You host The Voluntary Life. It's a podcast. Yes. And I, I didn't find out about this until I actually met you at Libertopia yeah, about that's six right. months ago. Yeah, back in October. And, and you said, oh, I have a podcast. And actually, you have two podcasts. One is The Psychology Book Club. Yep. That's the other one. Yep. And uh, the other one was The Voluntary Life. And I said, oh, tell me more about that. And you said, well, it's... It's like it sounds. And I thought you came up with a great name, first of all. Like pork, Thank you. Pork Therapy is has been the name of my show, but it really just doesn't describe what it's about. But The Voluntary Life does very, very well. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I mean, yeah, that's the idea is that the show is about uh, the voluntary life in, and in particular about leading the voluntary life as an individual. So what can you do to bring more freedom into your own life? What can you do in the day-to-day of your life to really enjoy as much freedom as possible in the here and now? Mm-hmm. It's, you know, I like, the, I, I like the Free State Project Liberty in Our Lifetime uh, uh, um, sort of tagline because I think that's a, a great idea. I'm really into liberty in our lifetime and, and really what you can do in practical steps both in terms of finding more freedom at work, more freedom in your personal relationships, uh, freedom to do the things you want, financial freedom, those kinds of ideas. Yeah, those are huge. I mean, because if you think about it, those are what affects you most day to day. I mean, this is what you're doing 24 hours a day. I mean, I realize that, you know, lots of people are interested in in the Fed and maybe Ron Paul stuff and things like that. But uh, it's really difficult to make any kind of meaningful change in those, especially as an individual. Whereas you have the power today, right now, to change things like your job if you're unsatisfied with it, your yeah. friendships if you're not satisfied with them, your relationships, um, all kinds of things. Yeah, exactly. So the idea of, of the show has been to, to really focus on those things where you have, I think the phrase is the locus of control, you know, where you, can, you can actually do something about it yourself. And my background's in entrepreneurship, so I've done quite a few episodes about how you can use entrepreneurship to get more freedom. But the idea has also been to interview other people Mm -hmm. who have um, sort of other things to say about uh, uh, ways of getting more freedom in in your life. So, for example, I interviewed the guy who who does the UnCollege website about alternatives to going to college. and um, and That was an eye-opener for me. Like, I wish I had heard that four years ago or five years ago, however long, you know. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's really interesting. I mean, it's getting harder and harder, I think, to actually make college pay for uh, as an investment yep. um, so yeah that was really good to see to hear him talking about alternatives and other people talking about unschooling and things like that mm-hmm. now one of the ones that I really liked there were two um, two things I wanted to touch on I mean all of Jake's podcasts are great okay but the series on entrepreneurship really demystified a lot of stuff for me I've been really interested in it, but haven't had the technical background or knowledge. And I'm sure a lot of it comes with experience, but listening to your podcast was really reassuring that, yes, this is something that anyone can do. And um, and I really like that. Thanks. The other one was uh, the investing in friendships. Mm. Uh, 
you did well a couple that that hit on the same topic but there was one in particular where you talked about there's like a bell curve of sort of like who you spend the most time with not a bell curve but like a scatter plot mm, right yeah of, uh, of who you spend the most time with versus how much basically you get out of that relationship yeah right and so there are people that you may spend a lot of time with like your coworkers, if you uh if you have a, a job where you have coworkers, right, where you work with other people. And, you know, those may be fulfilling work relationships or maybe not. You know, maybe you just kind of get along, you know, maybe you don't really talk about anything too uh, personal or something like that. Yeah. That is the case in, in my work life right now. Right. Hopefully that will change soon. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we're almost like siblings. Like some of us see each other more than, than our partners or something like that. And when you think about it, it that's kind of ridiculous. You know, the person you you choose y- your partner that you you want to spend the most time with of all uh, that you really value and you really get a lot out of that relationship. You're not going to see them as much as you see your random coworker who you didn't choose. You yeah. Know? Um, so that really made me think and and evaluate a lot of things. Thanks. Yeah, because I, I I think that's one of the things that you know, any society that you're in, any economy that you're in. There are some things that it's really, really hard to change. Like you said, the whole sort of we want to end the Fed and so forth. That, yeah. that stuff, we have no control over that. But even if you're in a, a, you know, a, a really tyrannical um, uh, society, you do have some control over things like your friendships. That's where you can make a significant uh, impact on how much freedom you enjoy in whether you can be yourself, you know, whether you can really say, uh, say things that, um, that you value and that you love and you're passionate about and, and whether you feel safe to talk about what it is that, y- that you are interested in. And so actually with, you know, historically with things like arranged marriages, you couldn't choose, you know, <laughs> right. who your spouse was. You couldn't choose uh, who was in your social circles. Yeah. You know, it, that was determined for you by people who are presumably older and wiser, but it's not you. I mean, yeah. Uh, the phrase and that always comes to mind is, whose life is this again? Yeah, <laughs> right? and I think in, in some ways, like as as we have sort of more advanced capitalist societies, there's more opportunity to have freedom in that way. Like people who used to live in little villages, I mean, how much freedom did you really have to choose your friends? There were, you know, very small communities. Mm-hmm. If you live in a big town, you have a lot more opportunity to or find the people. Internet. And of course, now the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have, and, and as you know, as you know, like, you know, we're friends and lots of our friends are around the world. So yeah. that's, the, that's the real opportunity. But I think it's making sure that the people that you do spend time with are the people who you actually do get the most enjoyment and satisfaction out of being with. And that was the idea of that, was a, you know, a, a way I found helpful for me to, to think about, well, um, where am I really investing my time in, in relationships? Are there people who I really love, are really interested in finding out more about their ideas and their thoughts, but I don't spend that much time with them? Or are there other people who I seem to be spending a lot of time with, but you know, when I'm honest with myself about it, do I really feel that I'm enjoying that time? Mm-hmm. And you know, the idea is that uh, if if there should be a good relationship between the amount of time that you spend with with people and how much you enjoy their company, and if there is if there are outliers, then I think that's worth thinking about. You know, what do you want to do with those outliers? Do you want to either invest more in a friendship with somebody who you you really enjoy their company, but you never you never end up seeing them? Mm-hmm. Um, or do you want to think about why it is that you're spending time with some people who you don't enjoy being with? Exactly. Yeah. So well said. I think that's really important. Uh, want to switch gears here really quickly? You you mentioned a little bit about the houseboat that yes. you stayed on in Boston. Yeah. And that made me think about the subject of sort of uh, leaving, you know, going somewhere else in search of mm. freedom. And mm. this is something that you and I have talked about a little bit, but yeah. it, but I've seen a lot of talks here at Porkfest about this. Like uh, Jeff Berwick was speaking today about expatriation. He lives in Mexico and, yeah. um, you know, believes this is like the key to freedom. And Doug Casey lives in Argentina and stuff like that. Um, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, maybe we could have you on a little bit more. Sure. Because I want to ask you about sure this. Sure thing. Okay. Thank you, Jake, if you would hang with us. This is Pork Therapy live from Pork Fest 2012. And uh, I'm so glad that you're with me. There's more coming up. Thank you for staying. Welcome back. 
back to Pork Therapy, live from Pork Fest 2012. So happy to be with you tonight. My name is Stephanie. I'm your host. And uh, I forgot to mention this before. I was a little bit scatterbrained trying to get in here and get everything going for the show. But we are not taking any calls tonight. But that's okay, because I have tons of interesting people here in the studio audience with me, including Jake, who was on the last segment. Uh, Jake from The Voluntary Life. Hello. Hello. And um, by the way, if you want to find Jake's po- uh, podcast, you can go to thevoluntaryLife.com. That's right. Very straightforward URL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unlike Pork Therapy. I actually had to buy the domain um, P-O-R-K Therapy. Right. Because uh, sometimes people get confused. <laughs> Have you just got a redirect on there or is there a big bacon logo Maybe or Maybe I should put the bacon. That would be funny. Yeah. That would be like a, like a spoof, a parody website of Pork Therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Bizarro World Pork Therapy. Yeah, exactly. Well, you can make your own um, karaoke version of the theme song. Did you know that? that I, have a I do know that because it's an <laughs> awesome theme song. Thank you. Yep, that was done by Hannah Hoffman, of course. She was here at Pork Fest for a little while, but she got uh, she got too hot. She All had right. to leave. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's very warm here at Porcupine uh, Freedom Festival. Who says New Hampshire is cold? See, this is like the, the thing that people complain about. Oh, New Hampshire is so cold. I would never want to live there, but... This week, it's sweltering. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. It does get nice and cool at night, though. The temperature drops. We're up in the mountains. And uh, amongst friends, that's the most important part. So I'm very glad to be here. Um, so, Jake, I, I wanted to ask you, um, at, we'll, we'll split the segment, which is kind of unusual. But I did just want to follow up from the last segment. Yeah. Because we were starting to get into a conversation about expatriation and mm. sort of like moving somewhere in search of freedom. Now, this is something that I did in 2006. I moved to New Hampshire. It was a really easy move. I mean, I moved one state over. I, you know, my old home was about two and a half hours from where my new home is, or my, the home that I live in now. Mm. And it, it was a convenient time in my life. I had just gotten out of college and, you know, was starting a new job up here. And so it was like, it, it was really easy. And I didn't mm. have to deal with any passports or taxes or anything like that, any changes. The only thing that changed was I actually was paying fewer taxes because I didn't have to... Uh, give the government goons their sales and income tax anymore, right. uh, like I did in Massachusetts. So a couple of things were different. Um, you know, it's a little more rural lifestyle. I kind of feel the state less. That's what I like to say. Mm. It's just there are fewer fewer cops, fewer signs, um, a little more open space. I don't know, something like that. Right. Hard to put a finger on, but, but it does seem to be um, a measurable increase in, in my freedom. Now, at the time... Options like going to a different country or seasteading, for instance, or colonizing the moon, um, <laughs> things like that were not within my reach. But now as I've gotten you know, a little more established and I've started to think about it a little bit more, you know, the option comes up every once in a while. Like, What would it be like to live um, in, an, in another country? Would that be a significant enough increase in freedom that it would be willing to trade off all the hassle of moving and all the th- new things that I would have to learn in order to live uh, someplace else. So, mm. I mean, what, what do you think about this? I'm really interested in that. I'm mm-hmm. really interested. And I've done a couple of interviews with people who, who are living abroad or have sort of chosen to at least try expatriating for a while and see how it goes. Uh-huh. Um, I also lived um, in Germany uh, for a while after uh, in the 90s. And uh, I found that really, really a, a great experience. Mm-hmm. And certainly, you know, to get... It's an opportunity to kind of go and go to another place. You've got to deal with a completely different language and circumstances, and it really opens you up to think about what kind of life do you want to lead, what kind of friends do you want to have, and it sort of reboots your life in a way. It's a really interesting experience to do. Reboots your life. Yeah. yeah you know, I imagine you, you have to deal with a lot of different challenges too, though. I mean, it always seems like it's a trade-off to me. Like, you can get more freedom in certain areas by moving around and stuff like that and maybe if those are really important to you it's worth it but is there any place on earth that has the total freedom that we're looking for i don't that's a question i haven't really been able to answer yeah and i don't think that there is you know this one country that's got this much more freedom and there's going to be a great place to move to i I just don't think i know some people you can get those they, they do those um indexes of like economic freedom and stuff like that yes. so obviously there are some places that are better than others for specific things but i guess it depends on what you want and and, and what you're going for i mean we have uh, friends who are in china because there seems to be just a huge amount of work there that just seems to be it re- seems really easy i've heard great things about um teaching english as a second language in other countries right and um, but we i know a lot of people who've gone there to teach english but actually now they're doing all sorts of things just because the the demand 
for uh, for work is so high that you can find lots of work. You can, you know, do do work in in um, if you have a skill like music or something, you can do that, or mm-hmm. you just find work in in the companies that are growing there. So, you know, personally, I would not want to live in China. I don't. Uh, I've been there. I visited there. It wouldn't. I wouldn't really feel comfortable there. But mm-hmm. if you, you know, if you want to be in a really dynamic economy and you want to spend a few years, you know, in a place like that, that's one opportunity that might work really well for you. I'm yeah, interested. Visit before you move. Yeah, I mean. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's always a good idea. Try it before you buy it, so, so to speak, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there is also the question of finding a place where if you have friends through the Internet, as we do, mm-hmm. it's really difficult to, to actually live in a place where all you and your friends can live together. So one yeah. thing we've been really interested in doing is, is researching, you know, are there places that we could all go and at least spend the winters or, or live together mm-hmm. in, you know, form our own uh, Gulch Gulch community. Yeah, Yeah, and And that would be an intentional community, right? Right, exactly. And that, you know, that makes total sense to me that that you would want to choose your neighbors just like you choose your spouse, just like you choose your your friends, you know, and hopefully choose your coworkers even. Um, That makes total sense that you want to live near people who share your values. Mm. So I, I really like that idea. It's just where <laughs> yeah absolutely and i mean I, i'm i'm really interested in um jeff berwick's stuff that he was talking about today the whole yeah. idea of finding a way to live as a permanent tourist and uh, and there are all sorts of tax advantages for that and See, i don't that, know that i don't sounds know sounds to me like like you'd be moving around a lot I, I mean i know he he doesn't right he has like a home base where yeah. he lives See, that's really important to me personally to have a to have someone some place to go back to a home base basically right. and um to think of myself as a permanent tourist, it kind of, uh, I kind of feel like it would be nomadic in a way. You yeah. Know, like there wouldn't be a, a place that I could just go to, but I don't know. I mean, what I what I got from his talk is that it's not so much that you literally like wander the earth as a tourist the whole time, but it's more to do with <laughs> your. The earth. Yeah. <laughs> it's more to do with your legal status of uh-huh. wherever you're staying. But yeah, I'm. I, I also. I know what you mean. Uh, I'm schlepping about the whole time and having to move between different countries for, for these for those kind of legal reasons doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But you know, if, if there's a way of doing it where you can get what you you're talking about, you have a home base and stuff. It's an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it's a fascinating topic, and of course, there's like a lot of ramifications to it. I mean, uh, depending on where you're coming from, sometimes, like in the U.S., for instance, mm. they will tax you even if you leave. Yeah. So if you don't want to be paying taxes to the U.S. government, maybe there are other ways you can go about that, like uh, trying to fall under the tax line or just outright not paying. I mean, like there are lots of different options that you could pursue if you really don't want to pay taxes, but leaving the country isn't necessarily one of them because... They may still want to get you. Yeah, and I think even if you don't get into the whole sort of uh, permanent tourist tax exile type thing, even if it's literally just going to live in another country to experience um, that, you know, living somewhere else, mm-hmm. I think it can be a, 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 a fantastic experience because it gives you a perspective on where you've grown up, where you've come from, and you realize a, a lot of things that you had taken for granted as being part of your personality that actually are probably more to do with just the culture, culture that you were raised in. And it's great to be able to s- sort of step outside your culture and see yourself, you know, as a part of of planet Earth and not as somebody who is, you know, English or American or whatever that is. You know? Oh, yeah, I can't stand that when people refer to, you know, everyone from a certain country or, like, nationality or whatever as, oh, you know, the, the, the Germans or whatever, you know, like just mm. some characteristic or the typical American personality, like, what is that? What does that even mean? You know, there are 33 million people living there, and or three, excuse me, 330 people living in America, and that they don't all have the same personality. Yeah. You know, they, it's, it's crazy, and it seems like a, just a way of controlling people, you know, like when you can put people into a group, you can pit groups against each other and, you know, create a lot of distractions that prevent people from seeing the real issue, which is that they're being controlled. Yeah. Uh, so nationalism and, and statism are just kind of forms of that to me. Yeah, and when you're abroad, if you, if you go and live somewhere else for long enough that you actually kind of work out how to survive there, you realize how much of what you learned as a kid and how much you took in from TV and school and you know, compulsory schooling and stuff is just totally arbitrary you know and when you yes. get, get if you can get outside that um that culture then you can look back on it and realize the things that you like and also the things that are just you know you just picked up along the way because you were indoctrinated in the way that you describe 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there you have it, uh, Jake, uh, unschooling himself around the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a really cool idea. And I mean, I'm sure this is sort of a lifelong research project, but you want to find out some answer that's at least satisfactory to you before you get you, you spend too much time on it. You know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, an ongoing area of research. Jake, thanks so much for coming on the Thank show. Thank you very much. TheVoluntaryLife.com is your website. Yes, that's it. And we'll be back with more pork therapy. Hour two is coming up live from the Porcupine Freedom Festival 2012 and a Cuddle Fest.